it's hard for me to talk about Edmondson Park without immediately thinking of what I would call public-public partnerships, and those may be more rare than public-private. But this was a project that was thought of and embraced by so many different entities, starting seven years ago with the Design Center, when they started their Design Your Neighborhood series, dealing with inner city youth, brought them in, kind of teaching them a little bit about design. A couple years later, MDHA followed up with, by putting an RFQ out for Edmondson Park, which uh, we were involved with. And we involved Oasis Center, a nonprofit right next to Edmondson Park, was a part of our team and actually hired some of those youth that had participated in Design Your Neighborhood to help us do the community outreach. It was an incredible opportunity, but it didn't stop there. As we got into the design, the Oasis Center found out that some of these fragments from the old state capitol, uh, the state capitol uh, columns, had actually been um, stored at the Tennessee State Penitentiary. We found out during the project that these capital, state capitol columns had actually been quarried from basically this site by slaves in the mid-1800s. We were able to go out, find those, bring them back. That involved the state of Tennessee. Um, we had to go through the Building Commission to get permission for that. Metro Arts Commission, very excited, very involved about William Edmondson, how to really honor his legacy, bringing in additional artists for the public arts process. The National Endowment of the Arts was a part of that. There was a grant from by Metro Arts Commission with the National Endowment that allowed us to bring these public um, public artist into the site, and then partnerships with Lipscomb University involving teaching and education. So at every level, partnership is the word. And it is so important to that community. It serves as a front porch for the John Henry Hale Homes, which was a Hope Six project, as well as a gateway to the entire Charlotte corridor. But in addition to that, in a broader sense, I think it's important to the city as a whole. William Edmondson was an amazing self-taught artist. He was the child of freed slaves, born in the 1870s, died in 1951. He was the first African-American artist to have a solo show at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Um, his legacy, I think, is so important to the city. And so what we were able to do, it had been named after him in the 1970s, but it was a little strip of land that had kind of languished. So the idea of really getting into Edmondson's work, every aspect of the park design really evolves out of Edmondson's own work. The sculpting of the topography, the materials, the limestone in various different stages from the boulders all the way down to the chips, even to those state capital columns, which were limestone which was Edmondson's material that he carved. Um, everything about it really related to Edmondson himself. And I think bringing the legacy of William Edmondson, who is such a part of our entire heritage, to some of the ownership within that neighborhood was really important as well. One and first most important, I think, to that community is they really wanted to have an open space that was theirs. And they wanted to, one of the things that came out in the community meetings was the idea of really incorporating health and healthy living. So the idea of um, the walking path, this park's relationship to the Oasis Bike Workshop right next door becomes evident. And uh, we used a lot of the bike wheels from Oasis Center to become one of our shelters, the Arbor Structures but they also use that path as they're teaching the kids from the community who actually build their own bikes at Oasis Bike Center, and then they use that path to kind of learn to ride. So I just think that that is so unique and not, nothing that happens anywhere else in the city or region.